All right, so this horse, I'm at uh, the K4 Ranch here with Brett Davis, and uh, and he's gracious enough to let me ride this horse. I've been doing some cowboying on him here. And uh, anyway, I just want to take this opportunity to talk about how I'd get him, get these horses to travel and around uh, with one-handed riding, okay, particularly with the bridle and uh, so versus a snaffle bit or something else like that. And so this is about a six-year-old uh, horse here and uh, uh, from the story, it sounded like he was a, a sort of started maybe 30 days and uh, with the idea to barrel race on him, and then somebody took him and just sort of uh, uh, just put a lot of pressure on him as far as making him a barrel horse. So um, he's of course he's he's calmed down. I rode him a little bit already. He's calmed down a lot, so he's not like a runaway. But I just show you this how what I'm thinking about handling these reins as it relates to the turns. And so um, when we think about a neck rein, uh, a lot of people, when they think about it, they think that uh, it means this, this high amount of pressure like that, see? And now he, he might do it, and another horse might not at all, but if you do this too much right there, you can, you can cause a pretty big uh, brace in them and counter arc and all that. So just because they can rein over when you use a lot of pressure doesn't mean that you should. Right? This is how not to rein one in the bridle. This produces a lot of counter arcing in the horse. It's considered over reining and it's just not as refined as what you see right here. In the video, this is how I'm applying my reins for the most part. It's not a rule, but it'll get you started. So we just want to ride him light. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my hand right here in this bridle box, this little six by six box and uh, and then what I'm going to do, instead of coming across his neck like that, which he responds to, but I'm going to choose not to, I'm going to lift up just slightly and just offset my rein. Almost like I'm allowing the slack to come into that inside direct rein there. And I'll move it over here on this side and just, just allow this one to float a little bit. So in the bridle rein, there's a direct rein and a support rein. So I'm thinking about these things. And then for these circles, circles. I'm going to think about putting this line out here like this, see? See that? And so he'll just follow that feel going to the left. And by the way, I'm not using my legs. I'm using my legs to ride, of course, but I'm not using a pressing leg at all. I could use a shaping leg sometimes. If I really exaggerated my legs, I'll get maneuvers like that, but that's not what I'm talking about here. So for the sake of the demonstration, I'm just gonna keep my legs quiet and very passive, okay? So you'll know it's coming from my core and my rein. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you with my hand what I'm doing with my body here. Do you see that? And I'll switch sides here and I'll project that line out through here as if to say, don't go there. Do you see how he catches that? And again, I gotta say, because everybody asked me, well, yeah, but you're using your, <laughs> your leg to do that, you're shaping it. No, not in this case. So uh, I, this is an isolation exercise for me, right? There's nothing wrong with using any cue that you wanna use, that's fine with me. But I just wanna show you how sensitive these horses are to pick up that feel. <clears throat> if there was some cattle here in the pen and I wanted to, I wanted to get behind them and move them, I, I'd shape them like this, see? I'd just use my hand, maybe I'm half Italian, but I'm gonna use my hand there. I'm gonna shape them out of this, out of this corner here and bring them around that way, see? Just take, take what's here and I'm gonna move that up. See that movement? So I take what's here and come up and then he moves around so he can feel that shape. So you give the horse a contrast from here to there. And they'll start to hone in to your torso movement like this or like this, right? But really in the end, it's so subtle, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it doesn't take hardly anything at all is what I'm saying. So now I'll use my rein a little bit more. So I'll lift up here and I'll just put, set, I'll set that rein as a border, see? Just as a border. And if, he go, if he goes up here and gets stuck, I could just, uh, Use him a remall there a little bit and get him to moving. In this case here, I'll set up this border with this rein right here. See how he turned? I 
again, place that rein on his neck, create that border, and then that's, that's all you need right there, and you wait. You wait. There's no leg in this right here. See how he's responding? And I like how he's just, he keeps moving. I like that in my horses. I didn't tell him to stop, and he doesn't stop. Now the left rein. Just lay that right on his neck. Do not do more if you want him this light. And I'll just wait till he starts to feel that. And of course the bit's working. Everything is, is going on there. A lot of things going on, right? So it's my body, it's the reins, it's the bit, all in combination. But my point with all this is, uh, is if you want that light horse, then ride him light, okay? Right here, let's see if we can come around a little bit more. To get him to come in to a little tighter circle, what I'll do is uh, get him going straight here again, get some impulsion up on him. What I'll do is I'll start to shift the weight back. So I don't rein him more to get him to turn and as if to come down to spin, for instance, just for a, for a, for a uh, explanation, is what I'll do is I'll sh start to shift the weight back. So here's my turn, and I'll start to shift the weight back a little bit more, a little bit more, and so on and so forth, right there for his level of understanding. He says, oh, I feel, I feel you shifting the weight back, but see, that made me stop. And I said, okay, fair enough, fair enough. So next time, I just won't shift the weight back as much. So we're riding along here. He's got this rein down pretty good, the directional, that neck rein, and now I'll just start shifting that weight back. So I'll come up, <clears throat> a lot of rocks, come up through here, see? Come up through here and, and ask him to, to keep going, to keep driving. It's really good to have your horse uh, broke to the quirt, if I could say it that way, <laughs> to understand what a quirt is. That's energy, right? And then, uh, but you take care of that in the hackamore or the snapple, but you'd take care of that then, early on in the training. Then he'd know. And then when I got him to this stage, if I needed a little bit more energy, a little bit more drive, I could just tap him there and he'd go. But you could see, you see him counter arc in there, but it's okay, I'm riding him how he is today. And I just get his feet loosened up. And right here, I'm gonna say, hey, let's get out on that straight line. So I'm gonna see if I can drive him out onto a straight line so he doesn't drop that shoulder. If he trots, that's fine. Get out there, right? Slow him down a little bit. Then again, one more time on this side. I rein him, there's my circle, and I start to shift the weight back. I come up here, I come up here, and he starts to take the front end across. And there he just got hung up, right? I lost my forward momentum, that's all that was. So ask him to go forward again, and we'll go here to the right. There's my circle. I'll start to shift the weight back now. That was nice. Pretty damn good. So <clears throat> I'll demonstrate now how I might be doing that while I'm in motion. A lot of people talk about, oh, I don't use my reins, I use my seat and my body. Well, hey, if you got reins, if you have reins in your hand, you're using the reins, okay? Otherwise, just go bridleless. So all of these elements have to come together as a whole. So it's not one or the other, it's just blending in pretty soon, nobody can see what you're doing. They can't differentiate, is that the rein or the body or what? And so that's good. And so as I come, see what he did right there? I started to reach for him and I started to come up. So if you had a, a your, your, your core here, and if you, if you had a ball and you started to lift that up here through that, see that, he's, he's coming up. Or what I say a lot of times, helps people understand where their body position is, is you just pretend like there's a laser beam coming out of the top of the saddle horn. And so if you're 40, you wanna shift the weight back, but you're here, how's he gonna shift the weight back? So it's coming up and I have to get out of the way. This doesn't include a lean back. I don't wanna be sitting on his loins. So what that might look like, I'll try to be as refined as I can. I'll ask him to shift back. I'll come up here and see him rock back there a little bit. That's fine. Let him go, let him settle, start to come up, shift this up and back. There he goes. And so what I'm doing here, right here, is what I'm doing on the circle to get him to start coming in. 
pretty soon you could be loping a circle and come all the way down to six foot circle if you'd like. But the important thing is, is to keep the drive going, keep forward momentum. If you ever lose the forward momentum, that's what you need to work on first. Always have that as your foundation. Thanks.